Hello. Only a short time ago, I too was called in for jury service here in Lake County. When I received the summons, I was a little bit anxious because I had never been through anything like this before. A lot of questions were racing through my mind. I have a family, a job, a host of other obligations, and I didn't know how long this was going to take or how I would fit in. There were many other questions racing through my mind. Hello, I'm Jackie Bang with WGN-TV. Welcome to the Lake County Courthouse. And on behalf of the judges of the 19th Judicial Circuit, I would like to thank you for fulfilling this very important responsibility of serving as a juror. This may not be where you would like to be right now, and like many jurors, you may feel a little bit overwhelmed about not knowing exactly what is expected of you and what to expect from the court. Well, this program, hopefully, will answer many of your questions and help you feel more comfortable as a juror. Our justice system cannot work unless people like you give us your valuable time and experience to resolve issues. And if you are like most jurors who are selected to serve on a jury, you will find it a very fulfilling, educational, and rewarding experience. Even judges are called to jury duty. The United States is one of the few countries in the world that has preserved the jury system, and it is one of our most important rights under the Constitution. No one has come up with a better way to give people a fair trial than a trial by jury. It's something our founding fathers cherished, and it is something our nation still cherishes. Hello, my name is George Ortiz and I'm the Chief Judge of the 19th Judicial Circuit. And on behalf of the entire 19th Judicial Circuit, it is my honor and privilege to welcome you to your courthouse, where you have been summoned to perform one of the most important duties in a free and democratic society such as ours, and that is to serve as a juror. Trial by jury is a foundation of American freedom. Our founding fathers so cherished these fundamental rights that they incorporated them into our Constitution. Right along with freedom of speech, freedom of religion, and freedom from unreasonable searches and seizures is the right to have your case heard by a jury. Thomas Jefferson said that the right to a trial by a jury is one of the bright constellations in our principles of democracy. Think about it. The preamble of the Constitution begins with we the people. Abraham Lincoln called our nation a government of the people, by the people, and for the people. When you sit as a juror in a criminal case, it will be you, not the government, that will determine if a defendant is innocent or guilty. In a civil case, it will be you, not the government, that will determine if a plaintiff or a defendant prevails. It doesn't matter who you are or who you know, the power is yours. This power is based on the rule of law. You know, no nation has ever given so much trust and responsibility to its people. Yes, that is what America is all about. And that is what the jury system is all about. And that is why your role as a juror is so important to our system of justice. In Illinois, most juries consist of 12 people. Most trials here in Lake County last between two and three days. When your number is called as a prospective juror, you will be brought up to the courtroom where the judge will introduce himself or herself and give you a very brief explanation of the type of case, the names of the parties, attorneys, and witnesses. The judge presides over the trial, making rulings on the law and setting the tone for the proceedings. The judge is responsible for protecting the rights of all concerned and ensuring that the trial is orderly and fair. The judge also decides what evidence the jury may hear and instructs the jury on the law that applies to the case. Let me introduce you to some of the other people who may be in the courtroom as well. The courtroom clerk sits near the judge and is responsible for assisting the judge in creating a summary of the proceedings for the official court file. The judge administers the oath to jurors and witnesses. There may be a court reporter who may sit near the witness stand with a small typewriter-like machine, making a written record of everything that is spoken in court. There may be a court interpreter who would help if a participant does not understand English or is hearing impaired. The interpreter will translate exactly what is being said. 
There will also be a courtroom officer present who is charged with maintaining order and security in the courtroom. Courtrooms are open to the public. Anyone who is interested may observe the proceedings. In a criminal case, the prosecutor files the charges alleging that the defendant violated one of the criminal laws in the state. The prosecutor represents the people of the state of Illinois. The defendant in a criminal case is the person who's been charged with a crime. A lawyer usually represents a defendant, although there may be occasions where the defendant represents him or herself. The prosecutor sits at one table while the defendant and his or her attorney sit at the other table. A civil case is brought when one person or legal entity like a corporation feels wronged by another person or legal entity. The person bringing the lawsuit is called the plaintiff and usually the plaintiff is seeking money damages. The party who is being sued is called the defendant. The plaintiff and his attorney sit at one table and the defendant and his attorney sit at the other table. Now that you have been introduced to the players in the courtroom, let's talk about what you can expect during the actual selection process. As prospective jurors, you'll be chosen to sit either in the jury box or in the public seating area. You will then be asked questions by the judge and probably by the attorneys for both sides. The questioning of the jurors is called voir dire, which means to speak the truth. The purpose is to let the attorneys learn a little bit about you personally so that they can select a fair and impartial jury. You will be asked if you know any of the parties, the attorneys, the witnesses, or the judge. The judge will also ask if you can be fair, and there likely will be questions regarding your personal experiences and opinions. There are no right or wrong answers to these questions. The only requirement is that you provide truthful answers to the questions presented. If answering a particular question in front of the other jurors makes you uncomfortable or embarrassed, you may ask the judge to answer it in private. You know, one of the things that worried me most was being asked questions. I was so nervous, but the judge and the lawyers were very cordial and respectful, and I really was not uncomfortable at all in answering their questions. The judge will give specific instructions to the jurors on how to conduct themselves during the trial. For example, the judge will instruct the jury to have no contact whatsoever with the parties, their attorneys, or witnesses. The judge will also instruct the jury that the only evidence to be considered is what is presented in court. Jurors must not do any independent investigation on the issues in the case or the players in the courtroom, including any internet research. Once the jury is picked, it is time to start the trial. Before the trial actually starts, you will be provided with notepads to take notes during the trial if you wish. Then, the judge will allow each side to give an opening statement. An opening statement is not evidence, but rather it is a statement by an attorney as to what he or she expects the evidence will show. The presentation of evidence is next. The prosecution or plaintiff goes first since they have the burden of proof. The prosecutor in a criminal case must prove the defendant is guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. The defendant is presumed to be innocent of the charges against him and this presumption remains with him throughout every stage of the trial and during your deliberations on the verdict. As jurors, you are the judges of the credibility of the witnesses you will decide the weight to be given to the testimony of each of them. In a civil case, the plaintiff must prove that it is more probably true than not true that the defendant is liable to the plaintiff. The attorney for the plaintiff or the prosecutor will ask the witness questions. At the conclusion of the testimony, the defense will then have the opportunity to conduct a cross-examination of the witness. Don't forget, the attorneys for each side are trying to convince you to look at the evidence in the way that's most favorable to their side of the case. That's why it's so important you not reach any conclusions until you've heard all the evidence. At the conclusion of the prosecutor or plaintiff's case, the defense may present its case. In a criminal case, the defendant has no obligation whatsoever to present evidence. He may rely on his presumption of innocence. During trial, either side might object to testimony or other evidence. Attorneys not only have the right, 
but the obligation to object when they believe testimony or evidence is not admissible. Judge. Sometimes the judge is able to rule on the objection immediately. Or sometimes the discussion will take place at the bench or outside of your presence. According to the law, certain matters must be held outside the presence of the jury. At the close of all the testimony, the attorneys for each side will have an opportunity to make what are called closing arguments. Again, what the lawyers say is not evidence, but rather what the attorney believes the evidence has shown. After closing arguments, the judge will instruct you on the law. You will also be given a written copy of the instructions to use during deliberations. You will then be directed to retire to the jury room to begin your deliberations. The judge told us that our first job was to select one of our members as a foreperson to preside over the deliberations. Then we went around the table and each one of us was given the opportunity to express our views. The deliberation period is an opportunity for you to state your thoughts and opinions about the testimony and the evidence introduced at trial. Remember, it is the duty of the jury to decide the facts based upon the evidence presented. Don't be shy. Remember that each juror is an equal participant and it is your responsibility to speak up and provide your input. We got to know each other as the trial was going on. When it was time to decide, we figured out who should be the foreperson. And she did a really good job in making sure we all had our say and that all the points of views were considered. Once the jury reaches a verdict, you will return to the courtroom. The foreperson will deliver the verdict to the judge. Once the trial is over, you are free to speak to whomever you please about your experience. However, there is no obligation whatsoever to talk about your case. In my observation, many jurors who come to the courthouse wish that they were someplace else. But after a trial, they found it to be an extremely fulfilling and rewarding experience. And it is not really surprising. Trial by jury is one of the bedrocks of our freedoms because it is you, the citizens, who will have a direct hand in administering justice. I've actually had the opportunity and I'll say privilege of serving on two juries, one of them here in Lake County, uh, the other was in North Carolina before I moved back home here to the Gurney area. And I would say that in each case, when I opened the letter from the mailbox, oh, jury duty. But in both cases, no pun intended, when I went to the court and actually participated, it was a wonderfully rewarding experience for me. Uh, I had an opportunity to really feel a part of an American experience and uh, it looked a lot like some of the courtroom dramas that we all see on television, but you have to keep in mind that you're dealing with real lives here and that places a tremendous amount of responsibility and in some cases power on you as a juror and I found that to be invigorating. I wasn't happy when I got the notice, but after I served, I have to say I'm really glad I did it. I saw how wonderful our system is. Everyone is so professional and courteous and works so hard to have a fair process. I was very proud to be part of it. It was probably one of the most important things I've ever done. The purpose of every trial is to ensure that justice is served. A courtroom is where people come together in a civilized society to resolve disputes in an orderly and peaceful manner. You as jurors make that possible. Being a juror is not only a great responsibility, but it is a great opportunity. For today, you will get an inside look into how our system of justice works and why it is such a treasured cornerstone of our country. And once again, on behalf of the 19th Judicial Circuit, I would like to thank you for being a part of this wonderful institution we call the American Judicial System. Thanks, Chief. I hope this has been informative, and thank you for your service.